Hello, my Wealthy Wife tribe and friends. This is Ms. Sophia here at Wealthy Wife. How are you doing? I want to start out first by saying thank you for joining me. I do appreciate you being here. A um, couple of announcements before I do forget. Today is the last day to join the monthly membership, the Elegant Muse VIP monthly membership. I am closing it to new memberships as of today. So if you've been looking at the membership, thinking about the membership, this is your last opportunity to join us. The group is still active, still very much going on. I'm just simply closing it to new members. And as I mentioned in a part audio, um, if I ever open it up again or do another membership, it will never be at the current membership price. It will definitely be going up. I have some additional things I'll be teaching, some new things going on, and I will not be offering another membership at this uh, particular membership price point. So if you've been eyeballing it, join us today because it will not be available as of midnight tomorrow. <laughs> so for those of you who actually have joined because I have had some new members coming in, welcome. Looking forward to seeing you guys. We have our next uh, monthly membership call on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, the 28th, from 7th, 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So for my established goddaughters who are part of the membership, looking forward to seeing you. And for you new ones, hopefully you can join us too. I do look forward to meeting you. You are going to be part of a really amazing group of women. We have an amazing time. I've been watching this group grow and expand and really deepen one their connection to self and build out a really great connection with their God sisters and myself. So I'm very happy. Another really reason I'm closing the group down because I like I like the energy right now. So once again, if you've been thinking about joining, last day to do so is today. Now, on to today's topic. As I mentioned before, because I've been posting it the past couple audios, I have been watching Kevin Samuel's videos. And as I said before, I've been watching him on and off for years. He's not someone I really focus on often, but every now and then I get the urge to go watch Kevin Samuel's because I'll say it again. He did have some very useful and powerful information to share. Yes, there were times he said things that were just straight asshole. I'm going to say it just the way I said it. He did say some things like going, really, Kevin? Really? Is that what you're thinking? But... Other times he had information to share that was so beneficial. So beneficial. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just thinking about something he was talking about in reference to women. Because, you know, he had this whole thing on ageism that always had me going, huh. Especially in reference to women. You know, what was it? What was the saying? Something about 20s, 30s. He always categories. 20-something, 30-something, 40-something, 50. And very much in age, very much into ageism. I'm like, going, I was kind of surprised, but whatever. Because I could say before, I know from personal experience that the things he says in reference, especially in reference to older women, are entirely untrue. But then I also stop and think for a second about his audience. Because one of the reasons I've been watching him lately is I've been taking time out to actually sit and listen to the Q&As and the comment section that happens after his conversations. And ladies, ladies, wow, it's bad. And I mean, not just him. I'm just saying the women... Really, I can see why he has some of the opinions he has because women do not come prepared with answers to his questions because some of his questions he also asks were good questions. He asked one the other day, because I'm still listening to this particular audio, in reference to what is the cost of your submission. I'm still listening to it, but I'm about halfway through it. And you know what? That's a very valid question. What is the cost of your submission? Because he was saying how women are discussing how ordinary men do not deserve their submission because of, you know, the fact that he doesn't have the resources to give her this grand lifestyle. I was like, okay. And when he was asking women who actually come on to speak with him directly, what was the cost of your submission? They danced around that question. Oh my God. You thought that someone put hot coals in their shoes the way they danced around the question. It's a very valid question question and it's one of the reasons why i do what i do at wealthy wife because my goddaughters can answer that question they know the answer for the ones who have been studying with me once they get past the initial fear of discussing money because it's the fear of discussing money if you're coming out of categories once again if you come out of a family either you know lower income or middle class you know, money for you, for the most part, has been taught that it's a bad thing. If you have money or don't talk about money, oh, shh, all these things. I get it. I come out of the middle class. Middle, upper middle class, right? I get it. Shh. You're not supposed to ask for anything, especially as a woman. You're not supposed to ask for anything. You don't want to look like a gold digger. You shouldn't ask for what you desire. Incorrect. 
But I'm also say this because sometimes women have these expectations, these grand expectations of these men. Once again, these high value, high earning men that she feels she deserved because some women actually said that. Well, I deserve him. And he's like, why? Once again, ladies, these are valid questions. Why do you deserve a high earning or high value man? Especially one in Kevin's category. I said before, Kevin, based upon just what I've been listening to, his men, they're definitely high earning men. Some of them were up and coming. Some were established. There probably were some rich men in his category. But Kevin, for the most part, just based upon my observation, was working with men who probably wanted to have children. These were men that were looking to get married, have families, etc. So he was working with a very narrow section of affluent, rich, and wealthy men. Because he was also against, how does he put it, especially to talk and discussing women who already had children. And he always felt like that was just, you know, no man should have to raise somebody else's children. Or no man wants to do that. Once again, untrue. Untrue. I don't care how many thousands of men he talked to. I've talked to, I have had discussions with thousands of men as well. And I have had plenty of men that have no issues with being with a woman who has children because usually they have children, especially if they've been divorced. Now, if they're unmarried, even some of them don't mind. It depends on the woman. It depends on who she is, what she represents, and what she's offering in reference to her energy and how she is going to help him transform his life. I'll say this again. Kevin was all about, you know, he's not talking about, you know, random situations. They're all about the statistics and numbers. I'm not so much about the statistics and numbers. I really do wish that man was still alive because I would love to have had a conversation with him. And I feel that it would have been a great conversation, just so you know. I really, really do feel that like he and I would have had a great conversation because, once again, very different ideologies and, and, you know, representation of how masculine and feminine energy works. I understand that, once again, there is no one size fits all for situations, but you have to be coming in as a fully aware woman. That's what I'm always discussing. Know thyself. Because when Kevin asks these questions and women are like, uh, 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 well, I just deserve him. I was like, no, that's not an answer, ladies. It's not an answer. You don't deserve him. You don't deserve him. I agree, with Kevin. You don't deserve him. You have to understand what you're doing in your whiz. When you guys are pursuing or desire these high value men, these high earning men, especially then if you go past high earning into athlete, to rich and wealthy, they're different type of men. Their headspace is different, their needs are different, their desires are different, what their expectations are different. These are usually legacy-minded men. Not all, but at a certain point, they become legacy, so there are certain things that they're looking for in the woman that they're going to spend time with and build their life with. Remember, I've had real conversations with these men. I'm not bringing you hearsay, and I'm not bringing you women's opinions. Because women have all kinds of opinions of what these men should be and how they should be and have no clue who they are because they've never spent time with them. Perfect example was a woman he was having a discussion with. And <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh, but it was just the conversation had me going, what? You know, he was asking what she desires. She was talking about this high value man, this high earning man, blah, blah, blah. X amount of six figures per month or per whatever, per year, et cetera, et cetera. And he came back and asked her, have you ever dated such a man? And she said, no. He goes, and how are you going to sit here and tell me what this man wants or needs or desires when you've never met one or dated one? Well, she goes, because. And that's like, that's not an answer. And then she proceeded to try to tell Kevin that he was wrong. He goes, but how do you know if I'm right or wrong when you've never met or dated this type of man? And then she went to say, well, introduce me to them. He's like, no. He goes, no. And you know what? I would say the same. No. I would not introduce her to these men either. Because he said, if I were to take you and put you into the room with these type of men, would you know what to say and do? Would she go? And, 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 and here's a kicker. He asked the question, would you even recognize them? I have to agree with him. I, I, I have to agree with him. Because, once again, some women have these grand expectations and these grandiose ideas that she should have this type of man. But she has no idea who they are, what they represent what they're interested in, who they and how they move in this world. That's why I put out the uh, the ebook, the uh, the the guide that I have out there after wealthy wives after rich and wealthy men, you know, basically when you know their hobbies and their interests, to start giving you ladies an opportunity to start of taking time out to evaluate where these men are, what they are doing, what their interests are and their reasons behind it. As I said before, there's tons of theories out there. 
Women have lots of conversations amongst women about these men, but have no idea who these men are. And then some of you may be moving in the spaces with them, but because you're so into that energy of basically acting like them, sounding like them, because he also has asked the question, and women, okay, so you think you deserve this type of man? Tell me why. And they would rattle off all their accomplishments. I've got my own house. I've got my own car. I've got, you know, 400 degrees. Da, 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 da. And he's like, they don't care. And he was right. And I've shared this before. Ladies, I'm saying nothing here in reference to nothing that you guys have not been hearing me discuss with you and share with you over the years. They don't care about those things. That's a resume. They applaud your, you know, your success because success admires success. Absolutely. But if that's what you're saying you had offered reference to partnership and a romantic relationship with these men, they don't care. They have the money. They have money. They have house, a house or houses. They have cars. They have many, many things. They have the material stuff. They don't need you to bring it with you. What they're looking for is somebody to build a life with. They're looking for companionship. They're looking for care. They're looking for somebody who actually brings ease into their lives. They're looking for someone that, once again, if she's going to be building with him, if this is a couple, and not a power couple, we're past power couples, but if this is a couple that's really looking for legacy, if they're looking to really build out something bigger, greater, and more, he doesn't need your degrees. Now, your connections, those will be beneficial. Who do you know? Who have you met? Who can you potentially introduce him to? Or even better, how well do you network? How do you understand how to get into some of these spaces to meet these people that he might need to meet in reference to future business uh, opportunities and desires that he has? I'll give the example of my father when he was still alive. And I've said before, I share. Some of you are brand new to my station, my, my channel, so you don't know, you know how I actually move in this space. But I spend time with affluent, especially rich and wealthy men. That is my space. I've been in time with these gentlemen for years. And I remember when I was living in South Florida, the gentlemen I spent time with, they were, they were amazing. They were, they were just amazing gentlemen. And these were rich and seriously wealthy men. I mean, seriously wealthy men. And I loved spending time with them, not because they had the money, because I'll be honest, I did not know initially how wealthy they were because I don't ask. I just spend time with people I enjoy spending time with. They invited me into their world. I had a chance to sit at their tables, spend time with them, get to know them as a collective and individually. So after knowing these gentlemen for years, my father wanted to start a business. And I'm like, okay, cool. And he needed funding. I was like, well, you know that I actually have these gentlemen, these friends of mine, these men I've known for years, they have the resources. I go, if you're interested in starting the business, I can sit down, ask them, you know, if they're looking to fund any new businesses, if they say yes and what they need from you, are you interested? He's like, sure, why not? I said, cool. So I went to my collective because I don't ask them for anything. They'll do whatever, I, you know, they're, they're willing to participate in this, assist and, you know, pour into me. But I wasn't asking because, once again, I have never had to be in a space to ask men. They will usually ask me, what do you desire? What do you need? They look to fill the need. I'm not looking to have to put my hand out and ask for something. Just how it works for me. And I love this, by the way. So I asked them. I go, my father's like, told him what's going on. My dad's looking to start a business, home repair, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they asked some questions. You know, does he have experience as this, da, da, da. Can he put together a business plan? I go, he's had tons of experience. Like My father's had experience with this for years. Gave him told them what he had been doing, what he was capable of doing. My father could fix damn near anything. I go, but what he would like to do was start a service so he can actually hire other people in, you know, and run this, this business because down in South Florida, there's always room for more people to repair things. They're like, okay, well, have him put together a business plan. Cool. And I'm sharing that because my network, these gentlemen are part of my, still part of my network. So if, what is your network like? Because, do you know how to network too? Because once again, I met these gentlemen just by being where they are, having a chance to, and just being, not like I said, not like I was looking to meet any of these men initially. I wasn't because I literally was spending my time, this was my Starbucks, spending my time, you know, just hanging out, enjoying the day, looking at the palm trees, all the beautiful cars, the delicious food, drinking my coffee, whatever. I'm literally just, that was my space to go relax and just be present with people when I wasn't being my typical introverted self. 
I met them once again just by being. I wasn't looking to join their table. I wasn't looking to become part of their lives. That happened because, I shall share the story now. It happened because, by chance, we were sitting on the same side of Starbucks, the sidewalk. They were a table away from me having a conversation about whatever. And I wasn't paying attention to the conversation initially because initially, I was reading a book. But they were all sitting there talking, blah, 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 blah. And here's the thing. I always, you know, I would, did not know them directly initially. But I would, when I'm there and I saw them so often, we would, we would say hi. At least, you know, hey, how are you doing? How's your day? That was our initial conversations. But I would sit at my table and I was reading, reading my book, had my stuff, my books on my table, my notepads, my, my backpack, because I'm a backpack kind of girl, kind of woman. And I remember I had stopped reading for a second. And I was just taking a break and I was looking around, just, you know, just being. And I remember somebody had made a comment about women and the comment was funny and it made me laugh. And it, I, was, I, I literally laughed out loud and they stopped talking. I'll never forget this. It was so funny because they stopped talking. And next thing I know, I have eight faces staring at me. And I'm like, I look over like, what? Oh, they're like, what? What's so funny? I go, what he just said. They're like, well, what he said was so funny. I repeated, I don't remember the comment anymore. But I repeated the comment. And I'm like, well, what do you know? And they're like, wait a minute. Like collectively, like you're a woman, come over here. We need some answers. <laughs> I was like, fine. Literally, two of them got up from their table. One grabbed an extra chair to put at their table because they put tables together. They grabbed another chair to make space for me at their table. One of them, two of them came over to collect my stuff. I grabbed my backpack. The other ones grabbed my books, my drinks, and everything else and moved me to their table. That's where the friendships began. And from that point on, for all the years that I've been around, that's these are gentlemen that I've known for years. So I have access to a fantastic network. And this network is so powerful and so just um, just like mind boggling that I have, have other people over the course of the years that when I would sit by myself, because, and because I said before, people watch you. They're always watching. So I would have individual men periodically come and want to start conversations with me because they were trying to figure out how to get through me to get to this group. Because this group is a group of very influential, influential men. This group of a, is of a group of men that literally are worth a shitload of money. Let's just leave it at that, okay? And these men have a phenomenal network. So I would have other men trying to find a way to get through me to get to them. And they're like, well, how do you know these? I've known these men for years. Really? Well, can you introduce me? It's like, no. Well, why not? I don't know who you are. I don't know you. I don't know you. Who are you? Who are you? I go, if you have a desire to get to know them, do it yourself. There's no way. I'm not ruining friendships over people that I don't know just because you think I could help you. You're doing, you're offering me nothing. And once again, I'm not wrecking friendships just because. I go, so figure it out, and I wish you the best of luck. But I'm sharing that story because when you're dealing with these men, if they're up and coming or even if they're established, what kind of network are you also bringing? Because I have a network to offer. See, these are things that you need to think about when you literally want to date affluent, rich, and wealthy men. If your man is up and coming, he could use the assistance. Because I'll say this again, I've said it through the course of many audios here, and I teach it inside a wealthy wife. You as a woman have a different way of connecting and meeting people. Because we have additional avenues that a man has no access to. We have access to wives, mothers, and other women that are part of those circles. If you are moving in that energy. So I'm asking you. Because like I said, when Kevin asked that question and these women are just like, duh, 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 and then get defensive. and like, why are you, he's asking a legit question. Why go straight to becoming defensive now because you can't answer because you know he's correct. How are you going to benefit these men? Now he is, I, he's always talking about the fact that we have to earn them as opposed to earning us. I thoroughly disagree with that because I know that is entirely untrue. We are what motivates men to do what they do. Even Kevin you know, he wasn't walking around, you know, looking good, smelling good, and doing whatever because he was, you know, for the sake of himself or for men, it was to draw the attention of women. We are the prize. I don't care what he tried to say that we aren't. He was incorrect. 
they're still trying to figure out how to obtain one or more of us. Facts. Facts. But there are certain qualities and desires that they have in reference to who they're going to pour their energy and their resources into, especially the further you go up the food chain, so to speak. So I asked the question, because I'm curious about the answer, because this is such a great question. What is the cost of your submission? I love that question. It was such a great question to ask. Because once again, women are discussing this. It goes all over your all over the internet, it's all over social media. Everyone's talking about you and blah 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 blah. You know, he's gotta do this for me. And I'm thinking, but why? Because we talk about money over here, a wealthy wife. Absolutely. Because you need to understand what that means. You know, people talk about they want a man to make six figures because one woman has told him she wants her husband to make, you know, six figures a year. He's like, but what does that mean? How much is six figures? What do you mean? He goes, because six figures is $100,000 to 999 you know, $1,000. 900000 900 you know what I'm saying, whatever. You get what I'm saying. And she's like, exactly. He's like, no. He goes, what do you need? Meaning, how much per year does this man need to make for you to have the kind of lifestyle you desire to live? She couldn't answer it. Matter of fact, none of them could. And then when one finally did say about a million dollars a year, okay, that was a start. And he also asked her, so what does that mean? What type of lifestyle does it involve? What are you doing in that space? Meaning, what are you doing? Because we all have responsibilities and relationships. And the more resources that are coming into the household, the more responsibilities you have. Because at that point, so she says a million dollars a year. At a million dollars a year, that's substantial. And if it's being handled properly, if it's being, if it's, you have the right accountants, the right CPAs, the right people and the right a ta a tax attorneys, people that can actually help you understand what to do with those resources, you can, most of that money can still stay within, you know, your family and to be utilized for what you guys are going to do. Now, did you notice there's people in there that I mentioned that you should be aware of? Your financial advisors, your accountants, your attorneys. Did you hear me mention those things? They're very important, just so you know. Um, because, once again, we want to know how much is left after all these things have to be handled and taken care of. She, she, she still stumbled through it, too, because she didn't have a clue. But she was someone who told him, and he asked the question, were you raised to be a traditional housewife? And she said, yes. No. She, her mother was a traditional housewife, but she was not a traditional housewife. She wasn't. She was still very much the modern woman. And I have nothing against modern women. I don't. I'm a modern woman. But I understand who I am, what I desire, my whys, and the kind of men that I am most, I'm the best fit for and who the best fit for me. I know who I am. And I could give numbers. Now, will I share my numbers here on YouTube? Hell no. Okay. Once again, mm-mm. No, those kind of things stay private because once again, that's between myself and the individual individuals that I'm spending time with. But I know my numbers and I know my whys. So when I'm having a conversation with a man, we're talking back and forth in reference to what we're looking to do, how this is going to play out. We have a very clear understanding. If it's suitable for both of us, then we can move forward. If it's not, then we go our separate way. Friendship can stay intact. If it's a friendship that's coming into the space of asking, you know, what are you wanting to marry me, the friendship can still stay intact if it's not going to be a good fit. You have to know your numbers and your why. That's what I'm saying. Not just because it looks good or sounds good. You need to understand because this, as we're talking about your household, the budgets for your household, for your child care, for you, for him. There's so much that goes into this. That's why when I watch some of these things are being shared and said with you guys about how to attract these men, I literally laugh out loud. I do, because I'm thinking, you guys still don't get it. You still don't get it. And once again, it depends on where he is on the process. Each category, each level has its own needs. So think about this. I mean, really, this is you can think about this amongst yourselves, and I'll probably be discussing this inside a wealthy wife because I just think it's such a great question. What is the cost of your submission? And now, in reference to submission, once again, he and I would have knocked heads on this one because I don't see it the way he sees it. Submission, once again, isn't about you being obedient, not about you having to, you know, to, to, to basically just do away with your own personalities and needs and serve this man based upon everything he wants. No, 
it is one is a collaboration two men who find the right woman he is in service to her she is his motivation she is his inspiration they have a desire to pour into the one that they love because she is what she brings a smile to his face she adds to his joy as i did in the last audio they're not going to a true man does not mistreat the woman he cares about and values why would he ever do that he won't because you're his purpose and then if the time comes that children are involved then they add to it relationships when you guys understand how they function they actually can be wonderful things but most of us have not been taught how to be in relationships and if you're looking at the people around you they don't know how to do relationships either so learning yourself learning how to speak about what you desire in your wise gives you such an edge because when the conversation comes up you can have these conversations early and you can have them with confidence and you're not going to be shrinking because what happens, what I've also noticed when I watch these women having these conversations with Kevin, and if he starts coming at them after them for some things that they're saying, because, you know, he he does. But once again, it's rightfully so because he's asking direct questions and getting these really fluffed answers or no answers at all, or they're just talking in circles. So when he finally does come and he's asking the question, no, that's not what I ask him. Ask this very, very yes, no question. And he's getting, well, you know, no, I don't. He goes, it's a yes or no question. And I have this issue at times with my goddaughters because sometimes they want to give all this backstory. No, I don't want the backstory. I'm asking a yes, no question for a reason. And then from there, we can build out into a deeper conversation. But I need to know, is this a yes or no question? Do you like this? Yes or no? Not, well, you know, no, I don't know. I don't care. Yes or no. If you desire this, why? Then we can go deeper. But they start dancing and they get mad at him and they're all disgruntled. And well, you know, it's not fair. It's, like, it's not about being fair. It's about if you desire this wife lifestyle, why? What does it look like to you? What does it mean to you? Are you prepared and equipped to handle it? Do you understand how to be the partner in a long term relationship? You want the money and the stuff. Do you understand how to be part of the relationship? Do you understand how to build out these partnerships? Do you understand how to build? Because when you think in terms of a traditional wife, and he's incorrect there too, but he said housewives don't get paid. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. That is something we've got to correct. Yes, she does. She deserves to get paid. That's what he says. What's the price of your submission? Because you deserve to get paid. You're doing 400,000 jobs. As a mother... You're doing 9 million jobs. As a wife, you're doing 9 million jobs. You know, just, and just being yourself and living and existing and breathing, you're doing 9 million jobs. So there definitely is a price tag attached to that. Wise men know this and they make sure their wife is covered. Be he somebody who is of average means, those men will go out there and work two jobs they need to or more to make sure that that wife and that household is covered. Men who understand the role of husband have no issues caring for the wife. It's getting women to understand the role of wife or whatever term you decide. If you decide not to become the wife, but you want long-term relationships, that's the paramour. I've discussed her. She's coming up. Got a whole course coming out in reference to her. Because I believe every woman should understand how to be the paramour before you even step into the space of wife. I really do because in the space of paramour, you're learning self, you're learning your, your requirements, you're learning your, your lifestyle options, you're learning how to interact with men, you're learning a ton of skill sets, and you're learning how to build for legacy, and you're also understanding how to, under, how to handle the financial aspects of life. So that when someone like, well, Kevin can't ask a question anymore, Kevin is gone, rest in peace or rest in power. But when that question comes up, what is the cost of your submission? You can answer and you can give very solid reasons why. Like this again, I'm into this stuff right now because I'm really finally listening to the after. And I'm just, ladies, I'm just like, wow. Just the level of just don't know is amazing. A lot of opinions, but no depth of understanding and almost no reasoning behind the, the reasons why they want what they want. When the woman asked him, well, I don't know where to meet these men. Show me where to meet them. And he told her no. She was offended. And I agree with Kevin, no. Because if I put you in the room where these men exist, if I put you in the space where these men are, do you, have not, do you understand how to have a conversation with them? 
do you could you even identify I didn't discuss that can you identify them because I said before women get all caught up in the fact that you know he has to go to suit to, to work in a suit do you understand that most men in suits are the ones working for the men with the real money most of the men I know that are very that are wealthy they're not suited up I'll say it again. Some of them literally look like bad. They're like 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 they're homeless. They do. They really do. It's, it's the craziest thing. I'm like, dude, really? They, they don't know. Trust me. I I know the signs and symptoms of money. Meaning, you know, the accessories, the conversation. There are things I listen for that let me know the difference. And most of the men that I know were suited up. They're working for the men that aren't. So could you even identify them? You know, if I were to take you someplace, if I were, if you were out socializing with me, and we were to go, we were to go somewhere, and I'm not telling you where we're going, we're just going to go out and about, and a gentleman walks up to you, and he's not looking all pristine, he's not all suited up, he's not you know all flavored up, so to speak. Would you understand who he might be? Would you understand the quality of the conversation? Would you know what questions to even ask to find out? I just came off of a call with, um, we just finished up the 30 day, um, become a, become an enchantress, 30 day um, flirtation celebration. And the God, two of the goddaughters mentioned, it's an art. So the, what they learned through that 30 day celebration was because I give examples of what to do in that celebration. This is one of those ones where I put out the assignment for the day. I give an example of what I would do in that particular situation to assist them. And they were saying that was very helpful, very useful. But they were paying attention to the fact that how I say things, the whole, just how I speak, the rhythm of my conversation, just little things that I do that made them realize this is an art. Because it is an art. Conversation, communicating is an art. There is something very beautiful about it. And we already know how much I love it. I just, it fascinates me. And listening to their, and they have had some mondo successes. I am so loving the energy of the goddaughters right now. They're transforming. They are transitioning into higher levels of themselves. They're finally seeing and letting the, who they are really meant to be because how the world is reacting to them, especially the masculine. One of my goddaughters, she was discussing an event that she participated in over the, uh, a couple weeks ago. It was a weekend event. And she was saying, using the techniques that were taught in that 30-day celebration, flirtation celebration, she was using some of the skill sets. And she was noticing how she had these men that just kept showing up to serve her, to be present for her. They just, they, all that whole three-day weekend, they just kept showing up. Can I get you something? Are you hungry? Do you, are you thirsty? Can I carry this for you? Just whatever. And she also noticed because she was also using the techniques of conversation and the flirtation skill sets. Because once again, flirting is a language. And it need not be anything sexual or romantic. It's just a way to have a very warm and engaging conversation with other people. And she was saying that she had, she had this really this, this increase in sales because she's an artist. So she was selling artwork. She goes, she goes, she had, it was just such a successful event for her. And she's understanding how, once again, how to be present with men that have Mondo resources. She's learning how to ask better questions. She's learning how to listen because they reveal themselves to you. They reveal what they need. When they finally feel comfortable with you, they begin to reveal, reveal what they actually desire and they need. And as a woman, you've got to learn how to be quiet and listen and stop trying to put in place what you think they should want and desire because that's what you want to do. Listen to what they desire or asking for. Makes life so much easier. Ooh, I need to eat. My stomach's growling. <laughs> but anyway, I just had to come on and mention this because, like I said, I'm going to be bringing more in because, like I said, just listening to these conversations of these women, I'm like, oh, my gosh. Ladies, you, so many need help. I mean, bona fide assistance. But I'll say this again. 
most aren't willing to learn because you want to do what you think is proper or you want to do what you want to do because you think that's how men are supposed to be. No, honey, I understand how men are and you have to understand how men are. And then, then you begin to work your magic. Because you're coming from a space of wisdom and knowledge as opposed to hearsay and hoping and wishing and demanding. Well, he has to be this way because it's what I want. He doesn't. No, they don't. No, trust me, they don't. And at a certain level, Kevin is correct. They're not going to be. But they do desire to be in the space of service to a woman who inspires them because her inspiration helps him become better, bigger, and more. It is such a beautiful process. It is such a beautiful, I, I love this. I mean it. I, when it works and flows right, it is so beautiful to watch. It is so beautiful to be a part of. My desire is always to have more of you in that space to be able to do this. But you must be willing to learn and do the work. This I come to you guys, like I said, with decades of experience in this space with some really phenomenal success. I desire for more women to have this kind of success in the relationships, for them to be in a space where they actually can be in a space of receiving and giving the reciprocity, the cycle of being poured into, overflowing onto. It's, mm, it's delightful. It really is. So anyway, that's the question which you guys to think about. Because it's a good question. What is the cost of your submission? And why? What does that involve? And what are you offering in exchange for your price? And don't and, and avoid getting all squeamish about this. And and do your darndest not to get all offended and want to get an attitude about it because it doesn't serve you, it doesn't serve him or them, because it could be more than one man. Literally Stop with the craziness. Stop with the, you know, the need to you want to fight and be, be, on, be, be on the defense. Ah, you know, like, ah. No. Literally take the time out to take a deep breath and think, okay, if I have this requirement, why? What does it look like? What are your expectations? What are you offering him? How are you going to enhance his life too? Do you bring resources, meaning not talking about monetary, no, no money, no money being exchanged from you to him. But what do you bring in a reference to resources? Who do you know? How can you, what doors can you also help open for him? If you don't, can't do that now, do you have the skill set to do it when, it when the opportunity presents itself? See, I'll say it again. There are many moving parts to this lifestyle. And I love working with women and showing them how to work the life, work in the lifestyle, how to be present, how to move, how to enjoy, how to elevate in this space. So anyway, that's all. Once again, final, final, final day. If you want to be part of some of these conversations, because these are conversations we also have during our monthly calls. I'm answering questions. I'm working with situations. You know, this is the whole, when we're in our calls, like this, I tell them all the time, you have me present. You are literally live with me in these calls. Ask your questions. They do. They also have information that's being shared of the wisdom is shared in reference to other God sisters. The group is an amazing group. So if you've been eyeballing it, get yourselves enrolled. Get yourselves into membership. I'm saying again, it will not be, it'll be no longer available as of tomorrow. This is Saturday, August 24th, 2024. You have through 11.59 p.m. this evening. So have an awesome day and let's talk soon. Bye-bye.